All right, we're back. 57th Annual AEA Convention and Trade Show at the Opryland Resort in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, we've got kind of a, the double threat from Aspen in this particular case. Uh, we've got, of course, uh, a former AOPA President Phil Boyer, who, of course, took a board position with Aspen, has been part of that team for a number of years, and Scott Smith, who will be talking to us about today's announcements of a VFR edition of the Evolution Display System and uh, the synthetic vision offering that was announced at the same time. Uh, Scott, first, tell us what's new in regards to the Evolution System. Yeah, thanks, Jim. We're, uh, we're excited to announce our new uh, VFR uh, PFD. And basically what, what that's going to do is give the option to customers to start at an entry-level uh, glass in their cockpit for under $5,000. Okay. And so uh, for that, for this product line, uh, it's going to have a CDI needle as well as uh, uh, full upgrade capability, which is going to allow a guy to uh, gradually increase. It's kind of a stepping stone if he wants to jump up to uh, IFR uh, capability later on. He can also uh, add weather and traffic capabilities as well as uh, upgrade to a full pro if he wishes. So you get a, but with the VFR unit you're going to get a Slave DG mm -hmm. and like I mentioned the CDI uh, left and right needle. You'll also get a uh, standard uh, six pack, which is airspeed, altimeter, attitude indicator, and uh, we'll also have an air data computer okay. with that. And so, if you look at it from a from a cost perspective, uh, a guy say goes out and puts in a Slave DG and a uh, uh, air data computer alone, you're you're well over that that price point. Or let's say let's say he puts in a uh, an indicator, like a G. Uh, just a standard uh, VOR nav indicator uh, and a, a slave DG. There's the there's the cost right there for you know for what he can get into a full glass display for. Oh my. Okay. Okay. Where did this come from? Uh, right. So uh, you know this segment of the market is kind of kind of untapped really. There's there's not a lot of offerings for a VFR uh, product. In, uh, in the market today uh, for glass. So, so that's what Aspen's doing. We're trying to, we're, we're gonna bring that uh, for customers and give them that option. And so they'll, uh, they'll have the, uh, uh, it be, should be available here uh, by April. Now, tell me about the upgrade path. Right, so, so the upgrade path consists of, uh, there's, there's, there's a couple of different options. For upgrades, so one would be he could go uh, go from a uh, the VFR unit up to a uh, pro, and that's just going to be the price difference okay. for that. And so uh, you're about another uh, five thousand dollars to get up to the pro. Now the pro is going to give you full autopilot integration, GPSs capability, and uh, full integration with uh, all your navs and comms in the cockpit. Um, he can do a, a lesser of that, which is just add uh, what we call an ACU or analog converter unit. Mm -hmm. And what that does is gives him the capability to interface with an autopilot. So he can he can uh, you know drive his autopilot and also interface with an existing navcom like a KX155, 165, and so forth. I'll be darned. I think Aspen's research uh, mirrors some things I've seen on the AOPA website just recently that a lot of people have an instrument rating or have an airplane, but they're not using it. They're mm -hmm. not current. Yeah. They, they don't want to spend the big bucks to go full IFR on a glass cockpit, but they'd like to enter the glass market. So this kind of fits that niche that he was talking about of those who have a 172, 182, yeah. uh, a plane that they they don't really, because of the weather implications and other things, fly IFR, uh, and yet now they can they can enter at a at a price that makes total sense over the mechanical replacements. Yeah, it's a it's a good entry entry level price point, like Phil was saying, and and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to give people the opportunity and the option to get into glass because at that ten thousand dollar price point, maybe guys say they really can't justify 
installing a piece of glass at that price point. Whereas, you know, for forty nine ninety five, I might take a second look. I might. But it's an entry know. to glass, mm -hmm. not necessarily for the entry level pilot. Right. It may be a pilot. I know a lot of my friends at about my age are saying, "I'm not flying instruments anymore. Right. I'm rated, but I just don't feel I should." So this, this is is a product for across that wide spectrum. Because mm -hmm. they're they are not the majority of those flying. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, we found that about fifty percent of all rated pilots out there are uh, uh, are either not current, not current, and and they don't they don't fly a lot of IFR, even though they're they're rated and they're uh, you know rated as IFR pilots. So so hopefully this will be a good a good uh, product for them to get into at uh, at a good price point. Outstanding. Now. What is the cost of the various upgrade paths? What, what is somebody going to put it if they, they've got the VFR capability, they find out it's not enough, they want to go. Right, so I get the VFR in and I, I decide I, I need an interface my autopilot, right? Okay. I got an autopilot, I need to interface that. There's $1,000. Okay. So just another $1,000 and you've got the interface of the autopilot. If uh, you want to upgrade to the uh, uh, pot, uh, Pro, so that gives you the full IFR capability with HSI. And glide slope, like we were talking about before, uh, that's the that's where you hit the ten thousand dollar mark. So you got a couple of okay. uh, different levels there. Now you can also add once you get to the pro level, we can add uh, synthetic vision, right? And synthetic vision um, is an, is you know to kind of jump off a little bit here, uh, segue into into another announcement that we made for all new uh, pro purchases. Okay, so our, for our PFD one thousand pro purchases. Uh, we're going to be offering the synthetic vision for uh, free mm -hmm. for 10 hours. Okay. <laughs> for 10 hours. Uh, for, so for and, 10 and hours. How do you imagine a trick like that? Is there a little slot in the side yeah. for quarters? And you just right, keep right. You just keep feeding it quarters, right? The uh, way it works is when the unit is powered on and in flight, so basically over 30 knots. Gotcha. Okay, we're going we're gonna to hit a timer that will, uh, once it gets down uh, after that 10 hours of flight, it shuts that capability off. Uh, well, I think we'll find uh, by doing this, it gives the customers an opportunity, you know, to use this feature and 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 decide whether it's for them or not. I think that we we will find that the majority will enjoy uh, using synthetic vision and will want to add that on. And that's a that's a twenty nine ninety five uh, option okay. for synthetic. When vision. you were talking, putting on my Aspen, yeah, there you go. Again, yeah. When you were talking about upgrade path, we were talking about just moving the VFR item to the pro, but. I like to think also the beauty of Aspen compared to the other ones out there is that you got one tube, you've upgraded it to the Pro, now you may want to put a second tube in so you have a better display of traffic, terrain, or anything you want on either the whole screen or yeah. breaking up That's the right, quadrant. Yeah. And after that, you may want to go to the third tube. That's the beauty of this modular system versus all one or nothing. That's right. Well, yeah, either either all or nothing, right? Yeah. And, uh, and a three screen display with Aspen is a thing of beauty. I really, that, that I'll, I love flying it. And, okay. and what was interesting is having the three dedicated displays really allows you to compartmentalize some of your tasking very nicely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and make it fit. If you're in terrain, you yeah. want terrain on big. Period. You're in weather, you want weather on yep. big. But you can stylize it. Yeah. And in less than an hour, I'll be heading back to home on a three-two Aspen system. Yeah. There you go. Well, and Phil, you made a you made a great point there with with being modular and and going back to the VFR unit. If a guy wants to do a VFR unit and wants an MFD, say, yep. he has yep. the option to add a 500 MFD uh, if he wants to do that. That's you know, right. and and then later on, he can upgrade to the Pro. He could add a 1,000 MFD. He can start cleaning up his panel. Uh, but you can get rid of his backups, except for a backup attitude indicator, and and that's what that's what's so nice about Aspen is that we give the customer options to, to I, decide. I liked, your, I, I liked his idea though. We got to get that down with the on the little slot with the corners. Right. We'll just keep adding <laughs> yeah. in all of a sudden. Another I, I think thing that's comes already up. on our right. April first list for this year. That's a good idea. A little <laughs> slot go. machine. So, uh, but yeah, the the just the uh, uh, the synthetic vision and uh, and our v, uh, adding synthetic vision for ten hours for new purchases. And also the uh, the VFR unit is what we're talking about at the show, and we'll be talking about it Sun of Fun as well, and throughout the year. So, let me put you on the spot for a moment oh uh, boy. as we finish up this particular interview. Might we see a new form factor at any time in the future? Uh, you know, anything's possible. Anything's possible. We'd we'd. Uh, well, I'm trying to you soften know, you up before we throw the really big uh, hard balls at John here. So yeah, you know. 
Yeah, well, uh, I'll let I'll let John hit on that. No, no, I <laughs> I tell you, Jim, anything's possible. Above you know, the pay grade. <laughs> yeah, right. Above the pay grade. I think we the, can safely uh, predict it won't be smaller. Right. There you go. <laughs> there won't be a smaller display. How's okay. that? There will not be a smaller display. I can I can just about guarantee that. I don't like to guarantee anything, but I can about guarantee that. We've been touching on a, on a theme, a couple of themes, after our conversation with Paula Dirks yesterday, the president of AEA. And we've been asking people about the certification burden. And, and yeah, I'm going to defend some of the yeah. guys in the FAA are trying, but let's face it, they are the minority rather than the majority. Right. But the combination of cost, complexity, and delay, uh, it's just got to be beating you to death in regards to trying to get product out on time get product into uh, into people's well, planes, get those installations certified, and God help question. you with an AML of any kind, right. because that's... Right, without question. That's pie in the sky. It is, it is a very tough world out there on the certification side, no question. Any manufacturer will tell you that. Anytime you gotta get in the certificate, dive into that certification pool, and deal with that end of, the, uh, end of our business, that you run into, there's always uh, delays, there's always, uh, issues and, and you're at the mercy of the FAA. There's mm -hmm. just no question. So Yeah well that's it makes that's it, it makes the story it tough. of our lives for the foreseeable future. We'll see if somewhere down the right. line we get some changes in uh, in that direction. Right. And a lot of times we get questions from customers about, you know, can I change this or do this or if we can add that. Hey, we'd love to do that. You know, we'd love to be able to make smaller changes from a software level, but you run in to the certification side that, that doesn't allow for that. You know, the FAA says nope, you can't do that. We've got to you know, revisit that and, and, and do a new certification for, for, for a lot of small, minor things. Well, Scott, where can somebody get more information about Aspen Avionics these days? Uh, the best outlet would be our website. I would go to our website at uh, just aspenavionics.com. And from there, uh, you can navigate and, and look underneath uh, where to buy. If you want to talk to one of our dealers in your area, uh, you can also go and uh, uh, view our different product lines. You can look at our uh, eight upcoming ADSB solutions and add, you know, add in uh, what you have currently in your cockpit. We have a, a tool for that on our website, and also our customer gallery. It's a really nice uh, uh, place to go. What is Aspen going to look like in my airplane? Mm -hmm. You know, I've got a Tiger, or I've got a Bonanza, or I've got a. Uh, I remember a Navion Piper, installation a Navion. in particular that was just about the neatest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, and and it. You know, so you can go on there and uh, take take bring up your airplane and see what Aspen would look like in your airplane. It's it's a cool it's a cool place. So. Alrighty, as we wind up this hour, we're uh, running a little bit uh, behind times, but then again, this is Aero News time, and that doesn't have any relation to physical time as we know it. Um, we've really enjoyed having Phil with us for the hour. Uh, Phil, you're heading back up to the frozen north. No, it's going to be 60 degrees tomorrow. Wow. Uh huh. Hey. Hopefully you have uh, tailwinds in if you're... Uh, headwind today. Uh, uh, tailwind I got coming down. Tailwind coming down. Well, at least you didn't get it both ways. And you flew down the A36? Yep. Okay. The three-tube Aspen A36. There you go. And I flew the three-tube Aspen Cirrus that I've, that <laughs> I've been flying. I remember flying. that installation very well. That's that was good. a sweet ride. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Phil, we really appreciate your Thanks, time. Jim. Scott, same thing. Yeah, uh, thank you. Obviously, especially... Uh, we're looking at a new airplane after this summer, and the installation that I've got in my mind for what's probably going to be a oh, Twin good. Comanche is the three-tube installation yeah. oh, that you great. do, as well as uh, possibly uh, uh, Abedine's DHC-90, yep. and a couple other little gizmos here and there, and the ability with a little bit extra tankage to do 2,000 nautical miles nonstop and go places. Oh, wow. That's well, going places. I'm <laughs> heading for Hawaii, man. I'm telling yeah. you. <laughs> to wind up my, uh, my hour here, uh, I really accepted this because I believe in AEA. I have all the time. It's, it's a trade organization. The avionics is where our whole industry is at right now. Yeah. When you look at the well, number of new planes. Where have you seen the planes, kind of progress you've seen in the avionics It's all industry. here. Yeah. And the management of AEA has been stable, oh. uh, almost family-like. Uh, <laughs> and, and their advocacy in Washington on the target. So, I mean, I'm here because the avionics installers and technicians and those who make up this organization are the backbone of where we're headed. And, uh, yeah. Really and magnificent group of people too. Yeah. I, uh, right. We put a lot of time and effort into our relationship with AEA and the reason for it is one, they make it real easy. Two, they make it a lot of fun. And boy, when you when you when when they commit to doing something, you never have to turn around and go, well, did they? No, it's yeah. done. It's really quite wonderful. And uh, 
all, uh, all associations in respect. I've never seen an association of their size work as effectively as AEA has. So I'm really glad to hear you uh, yeah, echo you. the kudos that we found in our experience with them. That's good stuff. Yeah. Have a safe trip home, Phil. Thank you. Scott, thanks so much. You bet. Thank you, Jim. Aero TV's coverage of the 57th annual AEA International Convention and Trade Show, live from Nashville, Tennessee, is brought to you in part by the following sponsors. The Bendix King KLR-10 Lift Reserve Indicator is now available for certified aircraft. It is an affordable, intuitive device for angle of attack awareness. Mounted on the glare shield, KLR-10 provides visual and audible lift cues while scanning for traffic or monitoring the runway on approach. Small, light, and ADS-B compatible. The Sandia Aerospace STX-165 Mode AC Transponder provides an uncommon value for today's aircraft. Check it out now at www.sandia.aero.